One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Hurricanes four, hardly one. ever happen in Huddersfield? Huddersfield. Halifax. Hampshire. Hartlepool. Yeah. Not Hartlepool, Hartlepool. Hartlepool.
Drake all night, the Bacardi's on. Come on, everybody, let's party on. Let's party on. Let's party on. We can dance all night till the night is gone. Let dance on. Come dance along. Let dance on. Let's party on. Let's party on. Let's party on. We can drink all night, the Bacardi's on. Go, girl, play me your party song. Let dance on. It's the party song. Let dance It lives in the heart of Europa. From London to lovers in Roma. We're dancing all over the world, the world. It lives in the heart of Velma. From London to West California. We're dancing all over the world, the world. Are you ready for the dance on? Are you ready for the dance on? Who's ready for the dance on? Eight.
Good afternoon and welcome to the South Lane Grand Prix here on day eight, uh, ready for race six. Uh, they've set a 286 kilometer race today, uh, which will be a little bit different. We're going south first, so it'll be uh, quite interesting. Start over the airfields, 
being upstaged by a bus. And uh, uh, weather today, well you can see it's hot and sunny, lovely conditions, not quite as hot as yesterday, 28 to 30, 29 degrees, uh, a little bit less energy, uh, wind is westerly in the valleys, and uh, we're expecting uh, a reasonably quick race. Yesterday's results, uh, third place was Thomas Gosner from Italy, and uh, very close finish for first and second. Sebastian Carver was actually first across the line, but actually had a penalty for being just a little bit too low. And Sebastian Nagel, who was second by three seconds, was also low, but not quite as low as Sebastian. And that difference uh, meant that uh, Sebastian Nagel actually uh, wins today and Sebastian Carver was in second. That makes it really interesting with the points. Right, so overall now, today being the last day, uh, fifth is René de Vidal in, with 16 points. Fourth is Werner Arman with 20 points. Third is Mario Kisling with 27 points. Uh, but uh, in second place, Sebastian Nagel with 37. And only three points in front is Sebastian Carr. And that's important because today there's an extra bonus point available for winning the race. So there is 11 points for first place, eight for second. So if it happens that way round, Sebastian and Sebastian will end up with equal points. But Sebastian Nagel will win based on the number of wins on countbacks. It's going to be really, really close. If Sebastian Nagel doesn't win and Sebastian Carver is just one place behind, he will win. So all to play for today. And what we're going to do is have a quick chat with some of the competitors and see if we can get some insight on what's going to happen today. So a uh, new cameraman today, Pedro. Uh, try not to bump into anything. Have a quick chat with these two. Uh, here's a couple of likely lads. Yeah, Can I just yeah. say it's my first time on Radio Sean. A big shout out to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's dreadful. <laughs> and boys, have you had a good week? It's been a great week. It's been, it's been tough actually for me in places. Um, just haven't been able to string the full uh, task together. You know, um, boys seem to make a have a brain explosion halfway around and, and take a wrong option. And when you do take wrong options here, you just get penalised. Uh, you get low and, and then it's sort of game over at that point. So, but it's been, I love the flying. The flying's fantastic. So can't, no complaints there. I've just got to have a better strategy, I think. Yeah. So today's the last chance to uh, get out of the Zero Points Club. Get out of the, the cellar dwellers, yes. It, yeah. Oh, I mean, I know, I know I'm capable of it. I just actually need to be sensible about what I do. Um, and, and, and stay high, I think. Yep. I tend to push on when I'm too low and then I just it, it gets worse. So uh, I think the trick today is be conservative, stay high, and, and, um, and hopefully things just you know, come together. First run's going to be interesting. I think the first thermal's going to be extremely interesting because um, it's going to be low, it's going to be on the ridge, it's going to be patchy, uh, and with 20 gliders probably being overly aggressive on the last day, um, I, think it, I think it could be, um, could be very exciting. It'll be very interesting to watch. Yes. Well, the best of luck. Yeah, I thanks. Hope you come out the Zero Points Club. Well, and, uh, it's hoping. Yeah, and, and you've had a good time. Yeah, oh, a fantastic time. We've met yeah. some great people here. Um, yeah, everyone's been so friendly, um, hospitable, and we've made, made some great friends. And, and there'll be long life, um, lifelong contacts that we'll have, yeah. you know, um, going forward. So you can't ask for much more than that. No, it's a good sport, isn't it? It's a great good. sport. Good. And uh, John, uh, if we can, don't get up too upstaged by the helicopter. Those things are the work of the devil. Ghast, ghastly uh, machines. Why would you get in something where one of the wings is going backwards all oh, the time? I know, it's just designed to screw itself into the ground. Yeah. It's a waste of time. <laughs> and um, what have been uh, your lasting memories? Oh, of this Sunday? this has just been magnificent. I think I think this has just been one of the best things I've done gliding. It's, it's a fabulous club, fabulous scenery. The competition's been great. It's been a privilege to fly with some of these pilots. Um, my ambition when I came here was to get a point. I've got eight, so I'm just blown away. I've done way better than I expected, but it's been fantastic. That's been great. It's good, yeah. it's been good to have you here. Um, <laughs> what do you hope to hope for today? Um, I think this is going to be a very tricky task. The difficult bit is going to be the transition coming north. Yeah. And where do we climb when we come off that San Ramon hill? Do we come back onto the launch ridge, Mankei Way? Do we? Risk it and head up to the golf course. I think that's quite a high risk manoeuvre, but it is definitely the fastest way. So I've got to figure that out. But Alfonso, all his tasks have been puzzles. He's always had something that catches you out. Like, like Mark, I think that first thermal is going to be 
exciting. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people clattering in. My bet is somebody forgets we can only turn right and tries to turn left. And oh, I hope they don't. But uh, yeah, it's, they're exciting enough without a hill in the way. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting day. Have a great Cheers. time. Thanks very much. Cheers. Right, so we'll wander back down this way. And uh, I'm hoping we can get a, a quick word with Sebastian Carver. He's, uh, he's seen me coming, he's running the other way. Oh no, he's, uh, hopefully we can catch a word. Sebastian? Oh, he's just putting his team shirt on. Well, let's we'll see if we can do, follow me over here. Perfect. Can I have a very quick, uh, quick word? We're live now. Sebastian, very quickly, um, in first place at the moment, what do you think you can do today? Can you stay in front? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. The, the task is again tricky. We have two, at least two traps. Uh, the first turn point and then the, uh, climbing to the, the third turn point and nobody knows how it will be. If someone is lucky enough to get the lift in front of the others or, or not. <laughs> okay. So we'll see. Have a great day. Thank you very Cheers. much. Thanks. Thanks, fellas. Right. So we're just going to wander on down here. They split the grid up a little bit today. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I wanted to talk to Crimmel and actually I can see him coming down this way. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can grab him and walk and talk at the same time. So, I'm not too shy today. Yeah, not <laughs> Sorry, he said you're not too shy today. I'm not too shy today for no. the interview, no. I'm happy. Well, one, one of the Sebastians is going to win today. Who's it going to yeah. be? Um, I can't lose. It's yeah. my, my thing for the day. I will uh, get a lot of experience. Yeah. I won every day uh, some experience, so normally the other Sebastian can lose. I can win every day, also today. That's a nice so, sentiment. Yeah. Nice. It's been a great week, isn't it? It was. Beautiful weather, nice gliders to, to fly here with the pilots, and the organization is perfect. Yeah. I, ho I hope to fly here the next, next time. Yeah. Well, you're one of the new generation of pilots coming through. Yeah. What would you say to uh, all of the German pilots back yeah. home, the young guys, um, to encourage them to come and do South Lane Grand Prix? Um, at first, train in Condor Simulator. <laughs> yeah. I did it since I was 15 and uh, learned a lot of people and a lot of flying. And then, yeah, try to fly Grand Prix. Uh, it's not too hard and you will get a lot of experience to be a hero on the end. So, Perfect. Yeah. Have a fantastic Thanks. day. Thanks. Cheers. Right, we'll just see who else we can grab down here. Not uh, Bostian from... Uh, Slovenia here in his JS1. See if we can grab a quick word. Doing okay for time. Bastian. Hello. Have you had a good week? Wonderful. It's been really? good weather, nice place to fly. Amazing, really good. Yeah. And what yeah. about the people? Nice people. I, I, in, I just enjoyed the whole two weeks here. Yeah. Wonderful, really. Good. And um, the task today? A bit different? Uh, very tricky. Mm. I expect a big fight today. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, it will be quite difficult. If the rumors will be not uh, normally strong, it will be a very difficult task today. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the route you're taking today reminds me a little bit... Um, <laughs> like the helicopter can go past. It reminds me a little bit of the, the ridge behind your home club. Sure. Yeah. That was there's a little smile there. Yeah, 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 yeah it's going to yeah, be like yeah, home, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. yeah. And how about climbing back up uh, to come north? Uh, that's uh, the big question. To I think to everyone. Maybe Rene has some uh, joker on his uh, pocket, but um, it will be it will be well quite uh, selective uh, point of or a part of task today. How to reach, uh, gain uh, the good altitude for uh, the next turn points on the north. So, uh, and then a different run home. We've, we've been running back from the south. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This will be, whenever you will be back on the fifth turn point, I mean, uh, then it's uh, just simple reach flying and uh, towards to the goal, so yeah. no problem. But. This part from, let's say, from the from the south till uh, the next storm point on the north uh, will be quite selective. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, we hope to see you on the podium later. Have, have a great time, so. enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Right, we'll just see if we can grab one last person. Uh, Rani Vidal here. He's a local hero from Chile. His local knowledge might be key today. So, right. it's, I'm a bit worried. He's got a bucket full of water. It's, it, it, is, it, is this secret water? No, no, I made a mistake. I was leaking some water on the tail. So I asked uh, the authority here if I can put extra water. Yeah. It was like 200 cc on this. Oh, just 200 cc yeah, extra water. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But I dropped yeah. some. <laughs> Special heavy water. Yeah. yeah heavy it's water. Condor, condor water. Condor water. <laughs> condor water. Yeah. Let's see if today we can do better. Now, now Rani, uh, this is the first time we've run south. Yes. The task. Yes, exactly. And it's to your home ridge. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be a secret. Uh, we have to start and we have to fly to Abanico, which is in San Ramon. And there's only one or two places where we can climb. So we'll be all together. It's no, no big deal. But the first leg would be low. We have to go to Rio Colorado and they will fly very low to El Blanco, where we probably climb a little bit before going to the first turn point, come back again, Blanco again. And then the key will be again in Abanico, the first turn we will take after the start because then, depends on the altitude, we can go either to uh, Santa Martina area, which is higher, or to Manquehue. So the, that, that would be the first key decision. Uh, and yeah, that, that's basically what the South is, can bring us, huh? that kind of decision right there in Aben Abanico, it's called. The other competitors say, come and ask Rene, which way are you gonna go? So which way are you gonna go? It depends on what altitude, there is a reach it's about 23, 2400. If we can get that top of the ridge, then I will go to Santa Martina. Okay? If not, I will go to Manquehue. So it, it depends. That's, everything will be decided there. Um, coming from north, uh, the last, uh, I think the third turn point is called Banos or Baños. Uh, then would be a very key decision point because then we can either go straight to Cobre, but we have a big mountain and normally the wind comes from the south. So there is one or two places where we can climb uh, or going to Laguna, which is a long way, but it's safe. Mm -hmm. So that will be very interesting. <laughs> you will see, you will see. Well, we, we will be watching. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. Okay, have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you that's, uh, that's pretty much it from, from the grid. We're gonna go and get set up in the commentary box and we look forward to seeing you later. And good afternoon and welcome to the Self Plane Grand Prix on the last day, day eight. Uh, we're looking forward to another fantastic race today. Race six, it's been a fantastic week here in uh, Santiago and Chile. Um, Benji's just gonna give us the, uh, the lowdown and zoom in as to where we are. And we'll see the competitors climbing up behind the start line today. We've uh, just had a little bit of news. Uh, looks like Roman Mercek has uh, uh, come back down to the airfield. Couldn't climb away. So uh, there may be a bit of a delay in the start. So we'll stick the start time up uh, when uh, uh, we know. Uh, lots of fuss going on behind us here. Just trying to organize a tow for him. And just had confirmation that the start time will be 15.10 local. We're a couple of minutes behind. It just gives us enough time to collect the data. So you'll see uh, Quebec X-Ray, Roman Mercek uh, taking off shortly. Down at the bottom of the screen, he's, uh, he's on the airfield. They're just turning him around and getting him up to the right end and they'll launch him from there. Uh, the rest of the competitors uh, up to the north. Uh, Mario Kisling now, 3,600 meters. Uh, Didier, nearly three, three and a half thousand meters. So it is possible to get away. Uh, just chilling out there, getting a bit of altitude and uh, keeping cool. Um, Brian, tell us what's happening. Uh, good afternoon, everybody from Chile. We've had a pretty busy time. We had some problems with the launching, which all eventually got uh, resolved. As a result, we've had to delay the opening of the start to 1510 local time. And so that's in what you can see on your screen is 26 minutes. The uh, unfortunately, Mark Tingi landed back. He didn't manage to climb away, and uh, Romans has also landed back. But I think Romans will wait 
to launch when the start line is open because he has an option to tow to the start zone after the start line is open because it's very difficult for him now to launch and climb up to that altitude. Because with the Grand Prix, we try to open the start line when everybody is able to start, but there's a limit to how long we can wait if people land back. Thanks for that, Brian. And uh, just to answer a couple of your questions, uh, we will have Alex uh, up in the Nimbus 4DM today. We're sending him off down to the first turn point. Uh, where we hope to get a decent phone signal from him. And um, what we're hoping to do there is to give you the conditions uh, so that we, we know what's going on. In fact, you'll know more than the competitors. So as soon as we can uh, uh, get some feedback from him, we'll give you a shout let you know. Meanwhile, we're also looking for Otoro, uh, who runs the operation here in the Club de Planadoris. And... Uh, uh, he'll tell us a bit about how you can come flying in Chile. But while we're waiting, um, um, we'll uh, see if we can't uh, keep the noise down in the office, please. Okay, and yeah, so we can think here. Um, right, we'll just run you through the, s the, uh, the task today. It, it, they've been setting some great puzzles um, this week, and, th and today's no exception. Uh, the first leg from the start heads south. Every other race has started up in the mountains, and today the start is over at the top of the airfield. There's an air show on here today. We've got thousands of people on the on the airfield, and uh, they want to see a good start. So they're actually going to head south across to turn point one. This is a leg of 31 kilometers to the Rio Colorado, the Colorado River. And to do that... Um, they've got to run onto the ridges. They're starting at 2,000 meters, and from 2,000 meters, uh, the, it will take them about 300 meters in altitude to get across to the other side, and then they'll run along the ridges, we think, and round the corner and to the Rio Colorado. Um, there are a couple of places there for them to climb, and uh, we'll just see if we can get the magic pen. If we can just scroll back a bit, Benji. Um, just uh, and I'll try and show you where we think they might end up, um, and we think uh, they're actually going to arrive here and run along the ridge here. And there are a couple of places that they can climb. They could climb here, or they could run a bit further and climb on the end before going around the corner. But we'll uh, see what happens. Uh, this leg is 31 kilometres. Uh, turn point in the middle of the valley and from that turn point there uh, they'll head south again uh, another 44 kilometers and again they've got a couple of routes that they can go here they could go left um, around the uh, the Rio Valley or they can uh, cut right um, and we just don't know I've been talking to the locals and they're not quite sure what they're going to do either yet really depends on the valley breeze uh, the wind at lower levels is going to be a westerly breeze, about 10 knots. Uh, it's predominantly a thermal breeze uh, uh, generated from the heat from the mountains, sucking the air off the sea. Uh, the sea is about 75 kilometers away, and it just brings the colder air in uh, across the city of Santiago and then up the hill. So when they finally get back down to turn point two, uh, the obvious route is actually to turn around and come back on the hill. So we're expecting them to come down here. And then they've got a long leg to turn point three. It's 117 kilometers back up north. And again, there's two choices here. If they're able to get a decent climb, they might cut right and come the high route round to turn point two, sorry, turn point three. Um, or they could run the ridges again. Uh, and that could be quite interesting. From th we've used this turn point before for a final glide and we've seen the competitors glide all the way back uh, into the finish and what they could do instead is to climb on the hill behind the club called the Mankewe or they could cut right to uh, a golf course that uh, they can climb away on or indeed if they've got enough altitude uh, they could get all the way to the laboratory. 10.3 is the highest 10 points we've got on the task today um, 
The base of it is 1,580 meters. This one sponsored by Funky Time, who make, uh, funnily enough, funky, funky clocks that go on the wall. Uh, all the other turn points are sponsored by LXNAV from Slovenia. And uh, from this turn point, turn point three, they had 26 kilometers uh, almost west. And again, this will be quite an interesting route, uh, cutting right over the higher ground, or if they're low, they may have to go down the valley to the turn point four. From turn point four, uh, they uh, head south again to turn point five, 21 kilometers. Again, a, sh a short leg, but uh, I'm told that this could be quite interesting. Uh, this valley is very low, and uh, they may end up going quite a long way left round the uh, round the corner to get to turn point five, and then from there they have a 45 kilometer run down the ridges to the checkpoint and then into the finish. So we're expecting if we can uh, uh, get let me look at this uh, 1,400 meters at turn point five, they should be able to run all the way home from there. So today, um, we've got lots of people lined up to talk to you today. Uh, we'll have Mario, as usual, we hope. We've also got Carlos Rocco, who's just come into the, the office, uh, one of the local pilots. And we have Otoro, who's been uh, organizing the event this week. And uh, he had a lot to do with the national championships, um, the Andes championships, uh, the week before. And you've also been organizing an air show today, Otoro. Tell us a bit about that. <laughs> Hello. It is. It's uh, a hard job, really, uh, doing two events uh, in, in parallel, but uh, everything is working very good by this time. And how many people do you think we've got here today? Uh, about uh, 1,500 1, yeah. people uh, by this time. Uh, we are expecting 2,000 during the, the after complete 2,000 during the afternoon. That's fantastic. We've got helicopters and there's aeroplanes, got all sorts of things here. Uh, yeah, we have a, a lot of airplanes. We, we, the, the idea is that people uh, get in the cockpit of a glider of a helicopter and, and, and a plane. So that was we have done with the, with the air show. Well, that's, that's great. And um, can you tell us how many people are actually involved in running this kind of event from the club's perspective? Uh, yeah. About 25 persons. That that is what we need for running the event. Uh, paid people. We also have a lot of uh, members that that are not paid, are not part of the staff. But uh, it seems it's uh, they are part of stuff really because they work a lot. Well, we've really enjoyed the the flying here this week. Um, We've got lots of people out there watching us today. Can you tell us a little bit about how they can come to Chile and how they can come and fly here? Um, well, really, we have not uh, uh, gliders enough uh, for for visitors uh, because princ uh, principally because uh, we have no insurance on the gliders. Um, but what we are, where we are really open to the to the um, uh, world community is that you can bring your own gliders and we can host you in Vitacura and uh, be in charge of, of getting the gliders out of the containers. But really, is that the option of coming here and fly with us? Uh, the, the season begins in uh, October and ends in, the, in March. So it's, it's a long time in which you can bring gliders and uh, divide in several people that could be coming to fly those gliders. So uh, if somebody wanted to bring their glider here, uh, I understand there's two or three containers come each year. Uh, who should they get in touch with? Uh, we will put it in, in, a, in, a, in the web page in where you can contact uh, each other uh, for, for see what, what you can do. So we will have a, a special uh, part, a special space in the web page for, for doing that job. We will do it this uh, in April, May. Okay, just uh, while we're talking to Otoro, just uh, let you know what's happening. Um, we've got 17 minutes to go. We've got a 10 minute delay um, because we had a couple of competitors uh, couldn't climb away and we've relaunched uh, one of them. We're just waiting for Ramachek to, to launch. They'll take him up to, to launch height. 
just watching Mark Tingey. He, he uh, landed back and has taken another launch. Looks like he's climbing away now uh, in the, on the Mankewe, the mountain behind us here. He's now at uh, 1,580 meters. The rest of the competitors uh, up to the north in the cool, up to 3,500 meters. And they'll stay there. They've been told on the radio that the, uh, there's a delay. And they'll be uh, coming back for the start. Uh, you can see the start line at the bottom of the screen. That's the red line here. Uh, when we look at the other side of it, it's the green side. All the competitors need to be behind the start line with uh, one minute to go. So there shouldn't be any problems with that today. And uh, just to recap on the results, the results from yesterday. In third place was Thomas Gostner uh, and scored himself seven points. And first and second, we could hardly separate them. The, uh, uh, the timing turned out to be three seconds between them. Very exciting finish. First physically across the line was Sebastian Carver. Um, but and with uh, Sebastian Nagel in, s in second place, but after the uh, referee had had a look at the the two flight records, it showed Sebastian Carver being three meters below the start. That's uh, why the finish altitude, and Sebastian Nagel one meter below the uh, start altitude. So uh, the difference there just two meters, but it made four seconds difference in terms of penalties. So actually, the result is Sebastian Nagel wins by one point, so one second, over Sebastian Carver, and that's made the uh, the point situation a lot tighter at the top. So uh, in first place, we have Sebastian Carver with 40 points, but much closer now, Sebastian Nagel with 37 points, and that's quite key. That three three point difference could be quite interesting today, um, because. Normally we have 10 points for first place, but today there's an extra bonus point. You get 11 points for first place, and second place is eight points. So should uh, Sebastian Nagel uh, win the race with Sebastian Kawa in second, they will end up on equal points. And then it goes back on the number of day wins, and Sebastian Nagel has won three days now, and Sebastian Kawa just the one. So that would make uh, Sebastian Nagel our champion for this year. So it could be a really, really exciting finish. Of course, if uh, Sebastian Nagel ends up a little lower down the order, it makes it much more difficult for him to uh, to win. And Sebastian Kawa just needs to be one place behind him. Uh, can anybody else do anything mathematically? Uh, Mario Kisling could overtake Sebastian Nagel if he doesn't score any points at all. Uh, and Mario Kisling would need to win and get 11 points. That would give him a total of... 38 points with uh, Sebastian Nagel Krimmel is his nickname would give him 37 points. So um, uh, we've got a few sums to do here while the race is going on and we'll try and uh, keep you up to date with what might happen there. Uh, there's a also a possibility that fifth and fourth place could swap over. René Vidal is currently on 16 points, one of the local pilots and uh, uh, Werner Arman has 20 points, so there's a, a little bit of a needle match going on there, and uh, we could see a, uh, a place change there. But the, the big story is uh, we know a Sebastian is going to win. It's just going to be which one. Right. How long we got to go now? Just over 13 minutes to go. And uh, just looking around. Ah, yes, Carlos. We've got Carlos here. We'll have a quick chat with Carlos. Um have you seen the, the task yet? Not yet. Yeah. Yep. Just getting him set up with a microphone. Yeah. So Hello, everyone. Hello, Anouk. So, Carlos, so you haven't seen the task yet. So you've yeah. just got a task sheet in front of you. Yeah. They've got a start line over the well, top of the clubhouse yeah, here. Yeah, well, this is interesting. Colorado turn point just uh, as the number one. It's very interesting turn point if you are coming low. Because also the start, it's... Uh, 2,000 meters. 2,000 meters, yes. That will be very interesting. So where do you think they'll they'll end up as they glide across the valley? Uh, well, uh, there's not uh, much to choose from. They will have to climb in um, San Ramon, what we are seeing now. Okay, what we're going to yeah. do is we're going to give you the, the okay. magic pink pen now. <laughs> Thank so you. Can you draw on the, on the screen just yeah. by clicking on the mouse so and... Uh, what the they will do, of course, is go from the start to this area here, what we call Abanico here. So here, then they will go 
this direction. Um, normally, you can climb here. There's another good climb here. Uh, no, let me see. I think it's uh, like around here. And finally, there's another one here. But if you get here and you didn't climb, that's your last chance. So uh, they will probably choose one of the three, and as uh, they will be all together, we will see a very interesting yeah. goggle there. So uh, there's an outside chance they don't get a climb. What are they going to do then? Uh, believe me, they will have to climb. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. Actually, um, there is an airfield there, isn't there? This uh, this area here is the most probably area they will climb because also they will arrive low, um, so they will be arriving lower than that, lower than that. Yes, more more or less that altitude. Um, so it won't be easy to climb uh, uh, on the first thermal. There will there will be a lot of gliders, and uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, we will see a really but, but big another, goggle there. another element to this in that um, previously they've always been heading north where they've had to turn left for the first 20 kilometers. Yep. Now we're heading south. The local procedures say that you have to turn right, so yep. away from the hill. Yes. Well, that's a safety uh, procedure because everyone will be arriving from the north with the uh, ridge to the left. So that's why we choose to turn right on the first uh, thermal. So every everyone uh, chooses the same uh, turn to the right um, and hopefully they will be at different altitudes, but I, I think we will see a lot of gliders in, in the first thermal, uh, same altitude. Uh, let's see how they start. I think the, the starting altitude and uh, speed will make some difference. So, yeah, but they will have to climb for sure. They will have to climb because uh, the good part of not racing is uh, what I should do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I was there, I will climb at least... 2400 i think yeah 2, something meters yeah yeah something like that okay um it depends on the wind if the wind is not really strong you can go to the first turn point with uh, less than that I, I mean leave the ridge with less than 24 but uh if this the wind is strong uh coming out from there you will have a uh, headwind and you will end very very low on the right side of the screen there so while uh, Carlos sorts his phone out. Oh. Um, if you're expecting to uh, have seen uh, a start by now, we're, we've got a delay, and um, a 10 minute delay, one of the competitors fell down and needed a relaunch, and then closely uh, followed by a second competitor, uh, Roma Merchek. And uh, they've relaunched Martin Ian, he's now up at uh, 1,584 meters and climbing. And Roman Merchek will take a launch and will be launched to start height. Uh, so he's just being patient down there. We're um, expecting a call from Alex, who's our eye in the sky. Uh, we've sent him off down to the first turn point to tell us what the conditions are there. And as soon as we get a, a phone call on the right phone, we'll try and plug him in. And um, we'll give you the view from the air. Meanwhile, eight minutes to go. The majority of the competitors uh, have climbed up to around the 3,500 metre mark and are starting to make their way back towards the, the start line. Start altitude today is 2,000 metres and the start line is right over the top of the airfield here um, as part of the, uh, the air show that we've got. Um, just looking at a couple of pictures uh, been sent through on the phone. Unfortunately, we can't show them to you. We'll try and sort that out another time. But uh, with limited resources here, we can't uh, can't change it. What did it look like to you, Carlos? Well, oh, they're still they're still checking their pictures. Yeah. Um, we'll uh, bring that to you in a second. Meanwhile, the competitors are making their way towards the start line. If you'd like to join in the conversation, you can do so. Just uh, click on the YouTube link, and then you'll see the live chat on the right-hand side. Um, you can let us know where you're watching, who's with you, whether you're having a good party or not. Um, you can also ask us questions. 
Uh, if they're of a technical nature, we'll try and answer those uh, in the text stream. And if they're gliding-related questions, then we'll try and answer those through the commentary. Um, so far, we've seen people logged in all over the world, which is fantastic. Uh, I know the weather in, in Europe is not particularly good at the moment, so we won't dwell on the fact that it's 28 to 29 degrees here. <laughs> Hot and sunny. And the beer's cold and good. Yeah, and that's uh, what you should know. When, when you are cold in Europe, you have to come and uh, fly with us here <laughs> in Chile. You see? Yeah, we're just looking at the clock now, just over six minutes to, to go before the start of this race. There is quite a party atmosphere going on outside here on the airfield. We've got uh, around 1,500 people here so far today, expecting nearly 2,000 by the end of the day. While the competitors are off uh, racing around the task, there's a few uh, displays going on. And uh, we're looking forward to the prize giving in the party this evening. And uh, Brian, you've got some more news for us. Well, I'm feeling very uh, anxious about Mark. He's struggling there at 1,500 meters. You, if everybody around the world watching wishes Mark, get a better climb, Mark. He's got to climb another 400 meters into the start altitude. And he's in the Zero Point Club and he desperately wants to get out. So let's hope he can manage to get the extra few hundred meters to get a start with everybody else. Okay, we've got uh, just coming up to five minutes, five minutes and 10 seconds to go. Uh, all the competitors with five minutes to go need to be turning left. So Mark's turning the right way, which is good news. Looks like Mark's climbing slowly. Just see what his climb rate is. Uh, ooh, not very good. Half a meter at best. This is the the Mankawe, your local ridge to climb away from. Is he in yeah. the right spot? Yeah, probably because uh, uh, there's only five minutes left to go. So um, I think it's uh, his best chance is to try to climb here. Um, on a good day, we can get uh, two thousand meters. Uh, on Mankewe, um, but uh, not sure today. Um, it looks like he's climbing. Uh, yeah, one side is going up, the other side is going yeah. down. Like that's, uh, yeah. That sounds like the kind of thermal I normally get. Yeah, I, get, I got some pictures from Alex um, showing us that uh, and there is a lot of clouds in the area where they, will cl uh, they were climbing in Españoles, rich. So uh, it looks good, but probably when they come back from the south, going mm -hmm. north, um, it will be probably covered and uh, cold. Yep. So no much activity uh, in one or two more hours. So a slower race, a more tactical race. Probably. Competitors just uh, controlling their altitude. Uh, maximum start altitude today is 2,000 meters. Task distance 286 kilometers, heading south first through a couple of turn points, and then they've got a long leg of 117 kilometers back up to the north. We're expecting them to arrive uh, across the valley onto the first ridge and run the ridges for a while. And a couple of opportunities to climb, but if they don't climb, they can get to the first turn point, um, and then they've got to make a decision. They've got to get high. There's some landing out options here uh, down in the valley. There are a few fields um, and there is an airfield that they can get to um, we'll pretty yeah. much from anywhere on the well, ridge. Well, we have one uh, nice story of uh, one in eight glide ratio on a race of a guy starting to the south, getting to San Ramon Ridge, uh, not being able to climb anything and landing in this airfield called Tobalawa. So if, uh, if you do the, the glide ratio from the start to Tovalau, it was one in eight. Oops. So hopefully we yeah, won't have... We won't uh, see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully yeah. today we won't. Yeah, we, we've seen glide ratios of 200 to one yesterday <laughs> yeah. in the, uh, on the run home. So uh, what are we looking at now, Benj? Uh, the just before the start, uh, competitors are now descending, uh, just coming up to two minutes to go. Uh, Roman Merschek has uh, just taken off. Uh, he's now at 1,050 meters. Mark's still trying to climb, making his way along the Mankewe. 
See if he can find a better point to climb at. Tilo joining back in with this group now. He's at 2,370 meters. So Carlos, if you were uh, up there with them, which end of the start line would you want to be at? Um, probably on the left side, uh, because uh, you will be heading to San Ramon uh, Ridge that will be on the left. So I think uh, a, a good start today is very, very important probably more than other days uh, you will be willing to be the first one in that thermal it will be difficult to climb with all the gliders so yeah having 50 more meters will make some difference I think yeah and our, our, our game is all about energy management uh, where would you uh, uh, would you be pushing to get there first or will you just would you be easing back and uh, trying to conserve your energy yeah I, I'm, I'm definitely will be will be going slow to get higher because if you get uh, too low actually the start is quite low so if you get too low uh, to the ridge uh, it's more difficult to find the good thermals mm. good thermals are from probably um, 1500 or something over 1500 yeah. so uh, if you get too low, it will be a lot more difficult to get the thermals. Yeah, we've got 15 seconds to go. You're not thinking of a, a career in politics, are you? Because you, you've, <laughs> you've just spent a minute not answering the question. Yeah. <laughs> As we see them running into the line, four yeah. seconds to go. And uh, Mark Tingey, who's a little lower, looks like he's heading hard left. Um, uh, who's that whiskey golf? Is uh, Werner Arman uh, heading at quite a strange angle, actually. Um, now kind of cutting back more towards the direction of the first uh, first turn. Uh, Rene in there and also uh, your countryman uh, Thomas in Zulu Zulu setting off. So everybody was behind the line before the start. So no start line uh, penalties for being over it. In terms of altitude, we think it was pretty even. Uh, start speeds, um, we won't be able to check until we get the flight recorders back but every now everybody now streaming across the valley starting to head a little bit further left S I'm just seeing if there's any obvious point that they might be aiming at well there is uh, I think there's only one uh, route to uh, to the ridge, we will see them arriving not on the first uh, mountains of the ridge, but uh, the one on the right. Yeah, that direction. Um, the first one is too far to the left, and then you have this gap in between. The, the yeah, they so will be arriving. Th they will be arriving. So there. this is where we yes. think they're going. Although Werner Armen looks like he's going a little further left. Yeah, well, we don't see the clouds. Maybe the clouds make one difference, but uh, um, I think the good route is straight ahead to the point we just show. Uh, out in front, Yankee Oscar. That's uh, John Gatfield. Yeah, and now uh, I think I see Sulu Sulu. Um, is yeah, he Tom Chilean? Thomas and uh, yeah, 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 I think he, he probably yes, is. Yes, yes, he is yeah. Chilean. Yeah, and Rene and Alpha Tango. Yep. We lost a bit of data from uh, John's glider. I will dare say we'll pick him up in again in a minute. Yeah, it looks like everybody's following all the locals. Yeah, I think uh, it, the, the start at least, um, the altitude to jump from the ridge to the first turn point uh, is quite tricky. If you get too low, it will be really difficult coming out of the valley with a uh, headwind. So, yeah, maybe they are uh, uh, just see what the, the locals are going to do. Rene looks comfortable, even though he's only down at 1800 meters. Sebastian Carva and Papa, not too far behind, won't want to let Rene get away. Thomas Gosner had a great day yesterday, came third. He's, he's loving his competition here. Um, always smiling, Thomas. Well, if you see, they are flying 178 or something ground speed. Yep. Um, so they are they are um, 
worried about the altitude to uh, getting the reach not very low and uh, I think that's uh, the good strategy uh, if you arrive too low here it will be a lot more difficult to climb on the first thermal hmm. we've seen that on a number of days that it, it's really important to be at the right point on the ridge if you're, if you're too low where the uh, the curve flattens out um, you're toast yes and actually the, the thermals they start a little bit uh, if you are too low where, where the uh, where you can see some buildings there um, you won't be able to catch probably any thermal to to climb but they are all arriving very high now at the at the ridge uh, the 1700 yeah that's yep. that's good and they should run along the top of the spine here and now the uh, the valley breeze and uh, the ridge lift comes from thermally generated wind which is sucked in up the side of the mountain yes yes uh, normally here we have uh, south uh, southwest some some days we have west wind but you will see that once they get there already getting to the ridge you will see they will be um, having some lift and I think they will climb on the next uh, ridge you see just the one in the middle we'll just uh, see if we can get the pen across there in a minute once we've uh, changed the view for you Yeah, so the next ridge you see coming to the west, the one, that one, that one. So the, yes, that, that's the area where there's a very good thermal. So we will probably see them uh, make the first turn there. So for everybody watching at home, you, you fly here every week. How realistic is the scenery we're, we're looking at now? Well, I'm surprised how realistic it is. Uh, actually, what... Uh, we are only missing the clouds. Uh, what you see is uh, almost what, what you see now in, in your screen is almost what we see when we are there. So it's really, really, really good uh, scenario. Well, um, I'll get Benji to put you on the tail of the glider in a minute so you <laughs> can actually see what they're seeing out the cockpit and make maybe make you feel a bit more jealous. Okay, let's see. Here I think they will make the first turn. Yeah, Rene, turning right pulling up and we'll just see how the Vario settles down. It's good in the first part, second part not quite so good, but it'll it'll average out. Yeah. You can imagine now a lot of farms making a lot of sound. Yeah. Uh, we'll very, very noisy farms right now. We're just gonna try and bring you a view of what's actually going on. And uh which glide are we on there, Benji? We're uh, on Rene's Rene's glider, and he's peeled go off Go, Chile, now. go. Well, <laughs> look, it seems that they didn't like it. Just one turn, push on. Oh, no, they are, no, they are, they're they trying are, again? Yeah, they're no. trying, yes. Uh, we can see uh, Thomas has uh, taken a turn to the right, along with uh, Werner Armin, but uh, Rene's decided to go back on track. Ooh. This will be very nice. Let's see how many. And uh, Sebastian also. He's aiming for the last thermal, probably. There's, there w there's another good thermal, usually at the end of the ridge, but that's the last choice. Yeah. The group behind, just trying one more turn. Yeah. S Sebastian Nagel in that group behind, a little higher. Uh, he won't mind the others just uh, pulling ahead. They'll be able to mark the thermals for him. And he won't want to lose touch, but uh, again, as long as he's got a little bit more altitude, he'll be happy. Just anxious to see where they go from here. Uh, we well, as I Malik said, yet. as I said, they will they will probably try the last thermal there is in yes there right there. It's a little bit more to the south. It's coming from the wind is coming from the right, but um, from the uh, Yes, the wind is coming this way. So um, uh, normally you have a thermal in the last ridge, but if there is no thermal there, um, honestly, I will be out of ideas. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if, there, if they don't find anything. Um, not sure what to do. I wouldn't go with this altitude to the turn point. So probably they, what they. Uh, they will do is 
just keep going south to get some altitude but um uh yeah it's for me it's better to be here now not there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn point one is actually not the one we can see on the screen to the right it's actually around the corner to the left and is this the uh, the rio valley that just coming up to you now yes the colorado valley sorry yes this is uh what we called cajon del maipo a uh, very nice area if you like hiking you go this route um there you see it here it should be the thermal now we see two groups the ones who kept uh, the first thermal they stood uh, f uh, climbing there we will see if this thermal is better if there is any mm -hmm. uh, we will see the difference between the two groups there is the thermal we just asked a quick question about uh, Roma Mercek who came back to the airfield he's been launched to the uh, height of the start uh, and is some way back but at least he was at 2,000 feet Mark Tingey who wasn't able to get to uh, the altitude after his second launch is running along the bottom of the ridge quite low at the moment and we'll try and bring you that data while we watch this group just trying to center and uh, get the maximum out of this uh, this climb as I said before um, I will go to the turn point with the uh, 2400 something like that not less unless there is very weak wind you can go with less than that but it doesn't look they will get that altitude from uh, this thermal yeah, it looks pretty weak I mean uh, Rene is climbing just over a meter now the group behind are quite interesting um, I just saw uh, so as a reference um, the altitude to get into the valley uh, should be uh, the altitude of the ridge to the left with the clouds where you see we'll just mark that for you in a second yeah Benji just working hard to get the next yeah view. look <laughs> I'm sure they're not happy with the what they are doing so uh, Giorgio Galetto in Yankee uh, the nickname the ridge rat um, 1800 meters he's probably in his element probably yes yes Thomas but they're, the they're the quite well, quite low if they try to get to the turn point right now they are quite low they w they will be arriving at least 500 meters below this okay i think we're getting uh, alex coming in alex can you hear us yes perfectly i can hear you guys yeah can you tell us what the weather's doing where you are uh, right now I'm at the southern end of San Ramon, that is 10 kilometers to the west of the first turn point, Rio Colorado. I'm at Twitter. And looks like the phone signal's uh, dropped out. Uh, if Alex comes back, we'll uh, we'll let you know. Um, but he's in this area, and he was uh, at 3,000 meters, I believe he said. So it is possible to climb a little higher. Yeah, we should ask uh, Alex what the wind, what the wind is. I think uh, uh, we should uh, try to ask Alex, Alex what the wind is because I see some pilots going to, uh, to cross the river very low probably if the wind is coming from the north a little uh, they could uh, find a chance of climbing on the other side. Yeah it looks like Rene and uh, Thomas two local pilots have headed that way. Just looking at the altitudes uh, Mark Tingey is not doing so well 1235 meters let's we'll see if we can pop back and have a look and see where he is in a minute um, okay we've got, we've got Alex back Alex uh, can you tell us what the wind's doing there it's really important for us I'm sorry say again can you tell us what the wind is doing please Alex yeah so it's very weak wind uh, it's basically the wind that we're catching up it's just gonna generated by the lift but generally uh, you, we're not talking about more than 10 kilometers of wind from the west southwest. It's influenced at the ridge. Uh, it's really helping a lot. We are getting a few little, little clouds formed once in a while at the end of the San Ramon uh, uh, mountain. Uh, but the base of these little puffs are uh, 2,100 or something. And it's really weak. Uh, it's really tough to run along the ridge. So uh, um, we've been uh, making use of our altitude and keeping it to see what these guys are doing. It's going to be tough for them to run back. Okay, thank you, Alex. That's brilliant. We'll give you a call a little later 
uh, for an update as they head north? Well, um, the, the good part of uh, the weak wind is that uh, you can be at the turn point a little lower because it won't be so difficult to uh, get out of the valley. Yep. Uh, if the, weak, uh, the wind is weak, uh, probably they will be, um, not sure, less than uh, 2,000 meters at the turn point, and then they will be able to catch the ridge probably to the south. Um, it looks like uh, Rene's just uh, got a couple of meters there. And then dropping off on the other side. Ooh, yeah, actually, me. now uh, I think uh, the locals, they lost the advantage because I've never seen a Chilean glider circling in this area. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really an area where we don't fly usually. So, and it looks they will keep going to the turn point. So they're all pioneering again. Uh, oh yeah, but that's uh, that's quite a distance still to the turn point, and they're very very low. So yes, Mark Tingy is still still in the game. Looks like he's climbing, but quite some way behind. One thousand two hundred and fifty-five meters now. And uh, in the altitude race, it looks like Roman Mercek and uh, Mario Kisling at seventeen hundred meters. Uh, Roman's quite some way behind, actually taking a different route. Um, you'll see him just behind the, we're just bringing you another view. And there's Roman uh, working his way higher up the ridge. So now we've seen where everybody is. Um, Mark Tingey, relatively safe where he is. He can get to the airfield from there if he needs to. Absolutely, the airfield is right there below the uh, um, San Abim and San Ramon uh, Ridge, also to the right. Yeah, just this is a car racing. Uh oh, the racing circuit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. that's, uh, I think, a good alternative. And uh, let me say that with the altitude, they are going to the turn point. Uh, we will have some uh, gliders arriving very, very low. Yep. In fact, Mark is no longer the lowest. Rene Vidal is now the lowest as he's pushed on towards the, the turn point. That doesn't come across very well on radio, that, that, no, uh, well, uh, that well symbol you were making. If you see my face now, I, I wouldn't like to... <laughs> no, yes. <It's laughs> Believe Tom me, I'm Thomas I'm is through the turn point. I think we see, I think there's a lot of tense pilots out there right now. Um, it's it's one of those situations that people get into, Carlos, on the la particularly on the last day, where everybody wants to just keep going, and that normally they would have stopped to climb somewhere even if it's weak, but nobody feels they can do that, and let's hope they don't fly themselves into real trouble here. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? I will. Well, yes. Um, We're just looking at uh, Tilo climbing three three meters now on the middle left of our screen. It looks like Sebastian Carl has seen that and he's uh, heading straight across. The three or four pilots that have been through the turn point are heading back in that direction. And let's hope they can get the climb underneath. It's so low that uh, we're not getting the best of the data here, but that's not surprising really. Um, they're tucked in right behind the ridge where our nearest antenna can see. Believe me, when these pilots arrive in the afternoon to the club, you will hear a lot of uh, stories of, I've been never been so low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we will hear a lot of that. So the analysis you think will be bar analysis and not uh, CU analysis? Yeah. Yeah, Tilo looks like he's pulled a blinder. Um, Sebastian Carver just underneath him. Uh, Yankee, that's uh, Giorgio Galetta. He's... he's uh, decided to get there too. And um, Zulu Zulu, which is Thomas, uh, he's been round the turn and climbing now 1,500 meters underneath. So he's having a good day. Rennie's been round the turn, but is down at 1,378 meters. Don't forget the valley floor here is probably only 900 meters or uh, less even. Um, yeah, it, it's l around 900, uh, 900 meters, yes. Meters, yeah. yeah, but believe me, what you see there that looks like good fields, they are not. Mm. Uh, it's actually a very steep valley, and uh, 
those fields there they're very very uh small probably a lot of fences and uh, so yes yeah. i will s I w probably i will be in the left group trying to get some altitude before going to the turn point i think i think a lot of the fields here have got vines in and big crops and they're almost impossible to land in yeah yeah actually um uh, if you ask Chilean pilots, they will tell you they don't have any outlandings in Chile. I think we, there's, uh, I think we have five to ten pilots with uh, field outlandings here in Chile because we fly so high, um, the Andes are so high, and we have a lot of a lot of airfields that we usually don't uh, use fields and we don't outlanding fields. So, um, Sean, Alex just came through to tell us the wind south to southwesterly, five to ten kilometers an hour, which figures why they've had to cross the valley and trying to climb away on this low corner here. Yeah, the sort of uh, northerly face here. Um, T low now nearly up to 2,000 meters. That's almost nosebleed territory today, isn't it? Yeah. I'm glad I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your, your chair is half a meter off the ground. <laughs> so Mario climbed with that group and has decided uh, he's got enough altitude to go into the turn point and then probably come back and join them on that. Uh, yeah, but I think half of there. the pilots they already make the turn point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, Carlos, if they can climb up here, they could head due south over the top of the mountain. But to do that, how much have they got to climb? How high have they got to get? There's no way at all they would be able to go from this. Uh, they will have to come west out of the ridge, out of the valley, and take the usual route we make uh, on uh, what we call Apoyo del Blanco and then Blanco. It's, um, it's out of the valley coming on the first line of ridges to the west. Because they won't, I think, what they're climbing there, they won't be able to get uh, high enough to go straight. I think actually they are climbing just to get out of the valley because they are very, very low. Um, so they're struggling to get out of the valley safely to keep going and not land in the first uh, field, airfield we have uh, a little bit to the south. Yeah. Tilo, who found that climb, has now left it, um, moved on through the turn point, and he's now coming back probably to the same climb. The, uh, the other competitors who went around the turn point low uh, now slowly climbing up um, in this area you see on the left-hand side of the screen. It, it is a pretty weak climb. Uh, just looking at Mario, it's sort of one and a half, two meters at best. It, it's a tough day for the winners in this competition. We've seen really high-speed racing. We've seen 15,000 feet or 5,000 meters. And for the last day, we're seeing a completely different type of racing now. Survival, weak, slow, being careful. But it's all part of the excitement of that fantastic sport. Yes, but uh, believe me, this, this turn point is very tricky uh, because it's, it's in the valley in an uh, area not really good for climbing. Um, once they get back uh, west out of the valley, and start uh, using the ridges to go to the to the southern turn point. We will see uh, uh, the the usual race, using the ridges uh, faster, probably. Um, so they are just climbing to get out of this valley safely to the uh, Blanco area. Yeah, they still got uh, 44 kilometers to go south. Yeah, and and then they got to work their way back up. Along this way as well. Yeah, but if uh, even even with the weak uh, wind, I think uh, it will be um, easy to get to the second turn point using the usual ridge on the on the valley. Sebastian Carlo now at uh, 2,200 meters, just going through the turn point. He climbed well uh, with this other group, has left it, and he'll come back. Tilo's not now got back to that group at 2,000 meters, and he's climbing again. Mario making the best of it, uh, climbing at uh, an average of three meters per second. He's now just over the 2,000 meter mark. Sebastian seems to have got a climb in the turn point zone. He just but got a little bit of energy, but he's um, 
he's lost it again and come back out again. Uh, and what we have to remember is that's about cloud base at the moment in that area. They can't get much higher than that because they're small cumulus at about 2,200, 2,300 meters. Yeah, but the altitude they have now, it's, um, it's very safe. Remember I said I would have jumped from the ridge to the turn point with uh, 2,400. So um, I was thinking of arriving to the turn point at uh, 2,000, 2,200, something like that. They already, uh, some of them, they already have th this uh, altitude and probably uh, they will start going south now. Yeah, but we now start to see um, uh, Tilo now leaving, coming out of the valley, heading west. Yeah, with um, uh, Alpha Tango. What what uh, country is Alpha Tango? <laughs> you I know, think, I, I think it's Chile. Chilean, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's uh, a suspicion of some weak wave now as they're running very slowly, but uh, uh, running and climbing out over the valley. Yeah, have but you I seen I wave here before? I no, not at all. We have never been at that altitude in <laughs> this area, so. Um, I d I'm not sure what uh, Tilo is doing. Tilo is going west. Oh, maybe we cannot see the clouds. Yeah, probably there are some mm -hmm. clouds there. But he's getting a lot of a sink now. All right, we're uh, just watching Papa Lima, actually. Uh, Lukash uh, looks like Look at he's... The sink. He's pushed on a little further. Yeah, the sink going across the valley is uh, yes. quite interesting. Um, uh, Oscar Bravo is uh, Mark, and he's now at uh, 1,449 meters. Uh, Lukash is quite a long way out in the valley and very low, 1,230 meters. As the rest of the group are now starting to make sense of this now and, and heading so off, off across nice. to the ridge. In terms of distance, uh, Lucas from Poland is um, certainly much closer to the, the turn point, but he's very low. Are we sure he, well, we must, he must have been around the turn point, otherwise the distance to the turn point wouldn't have ticked over. Mark Tingey's still not been round yet, and probably still not high enough to get into the turn point. As the top of the pile looks like uh, Rene and Sebastian. Rene, 39 kilometers to go. Uh, his altitude, 1960 at the moment. Sebastian keeping an eye on him. Bostian in there and Eka Juliet. Tilo having a, a better day. Mario coming across strongly. Werner Armand and Whiskey Golf. Do we think, uh, Carlos, that Papa Lima's decided he's going to try and run the ridges low down, that he's going to try and come round the corner? It's uh, Lukas from Poland. Yeah, yeah um, he made the turn point already, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he's quite low, really, uh, for what we do usually. He's quite low. If you see, he's arriving uh, to a ridge. We usually arrive to the ridge higher on the left, you see? But, uh, well, I, I think that he will be able to climb somewhere there, probably on the next one also. Uh, when we are low, we keep going south to the next ridge, and there is some good climbing on the next ridge. Mm. He's, um, not, he's not listening to you. He's coming, <laughs> he's coming north. <laughs> yes. Actually, he's not climbing. No. So, yes, yeah, he's, he's quite low. Um, but there are some good fields now to the right-hand side, and... Uh, also, there's there are two airfields to the south. He's on uh, reach probably of at least one of them. Yeah, we've got now got a good view of the terrain underneath him. And we've got this river valley they've got to come across here. Um, yeah, so that one is, uh, there's an airfield there, so very safely. Uh, if he, he um, keeps going, I think it's safe enough to get to that airfield, but he's quite low. We will see the rest of the guys arriving to the ridge on the left, but probably over the ridge, you see? They will be arriving at uh, the next ridge to the left, yes. 
Uh, Sebastian Carver with uh, l more height than the others at the moment. Lucas a little further ahead, but a lot lower. Rene Vidal in second place at the moment. Go Chile. <laughs> <laughs> what you happened to Thomas? Yeah. He was he was in there for a while. Thomas seemed to go off to the north for some reason. We haven't seen him that since then, so I don't know what his plan was. Um, that's uh, Zulu Zulu. Thomas uh, Chili Thomas. Yeah. Chili Thomas. Where's uh, he from? Uh, I think he's Chilean, right? Chile, Chile. Yeah, 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 he is. Yeah. We have very good pilots here in Chile. Chile yeah. <laughs> here he is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, not flying so high, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I can bet he was thinking of getting out safely from the Bali. Yeah. Better than, uh, more than uh, thinking about the race. Because for us, uh, we, we can uh, make a little interview of uh, to René mm -hmm. uh, after the race and ask him how he felt in the first turn point at that altitude. You will hear some nice stories. Meanwhile, back at the front, um Looks like Sebastian Carvo has decided to uh, push forward and show us what he can do. Uh, it's unusual for us to see him take the lead so early on. He normally uh, likes to wait and, and hang back and then make his move a little later. Yeah, what we will see probably is that René will keep going south instead of taking the ridge. Because um, you fly a, a lot to the left, to the east, by taking the ridge, and then you will probably um, Sebastian will have to come again all the way to the west, not getting much lift. You see, Ren is going straight to the next the next ridge instead of using the ridge because uh, Sebastian will have to come back to the west, and they will probably meet at the next ridge and with Ren. Will they be at the same altitude? Probably, yes. That's a lot of willpower. Not to go the same way as somebody who's ten times world champion when he's just in front of you. Yeah. Unless you're local and Chilean. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rest of the pack seem to be uh, betting on, uh, on the locals. Rene. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because they know he's Chilean. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I say Chile too much. Is eh? it? Are you, you want a retainer for every time you say Chile? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping you're enjoying you uh, the view. Yeah, Sebastian we can see is now. coming again uh, to the west. He, he has done well. He's uh, 150, 200 meters higher. You don't look worried at all. Yeah, but they, uh, I think they will arrive to Blanco, the next mountain, the, the white one. Blanco is white in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, they will arrive uh, similar to Blanco because also Rene will arrive first. And uh, we usually find good lift and good thermals at Blanco. Sebastian must have thought this has got to be the right way. Why isn't yeah, everybody coming with me? Look, look now. Yeah. He's uh, 1900 in and in the middle of the group while he was leading. He's a little bit behind, but he's actually probably gained nearly 100 meters. So he's not really lost by that. Uh, we, we, the time we will find out is when they stop to climb on the Blanco. Then we'll see if it was a good idea or not. Yeah, but it looks like the day is weak. So I don't think we will find the usually three to four meters at Blanco. So we will see then. He can't have done so well because he's not from where? <laughs> <laughs> Chile. <laughs> yes. mm. <laughs> well, yeah. he's been here uh, this uh, two times at least. He w he won actually the uh, final in 2010. Yeah, who did he beat that year? Who did he beat? I think he beat the Chilean pilot. Is that right? Who was the Chilean yeah, pilot? Um, um, and let me, let me, uh, I think it was me. Ah, it was <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, you did fly incredibly well that week. Yeah. Uh, I know I would uh, have flown better this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Rene leading the pack into of Blanco. truth here. So what that... Given that we've had quite weak conditions up till now, what sort of climb rate do you think they'll get when they get to Blanco? Um, difficult to say. It depends if there are some clouds there, if it's uh, with sun or covered. Um, it looks like there are a lot of clouds, but not on the first uh, uh, ridges. So they will probably climb. If you see the ridge that goes 
to the right here. Once they get there, they will start climbing. This is usually a very good thermal. Actually, uh, you can see Tilo on the right going straight to that one. And uh, Rene is there. A lot of sink there, three yeah. nearly four meters yeah. down. That's because he is Chilean. He knows there is the thermal and he's looking for it. But, but we, we regularly in this contest have seen Tilo flying a slightly different route to everybody else. And it only seems to work about half the time. So he needs to get his averages a little bit better and try to get his route to work a little bit better than half the time. Yeah, it looks like uh, oh Rene's quarter it. quarter thermal there. To see what it averages out at. And we're now on board with Rene. Ah, look at the nice flag on the left uh, bottom of the screen. Very nice flag. And it uh, looks like Giorgio Galetto in uh, Yankee. He's now just coming into that thermal as well. Didier underneath. Tilo pushing on. Tilo missed it again. Uh, he's off trying to find his own thermal. Giorgio Galetto's turned back. Tilo now having found a, a climb, turning right. Sebastian Carver has seen him and is moving on. I wonder what uh, climb rate that Tilo can manage here. And of course they're flying without clouds now. They're flying in blue conditions. They're looking at the terrain to find the energy and it's a, a leap of faith every time they move on that it's going to be better where they're going than where they are. Yes, actually I'm wondering what the lift on the ridges is because with this altitude they have now um, or at, at 100 more meters you can go to the turn point using the ridge you have to, uh, to the south. So instead of keep climbing, keeping uh, the thermal here, you can take the ridge you see now in the front, and Marion go in to India. the turn point. Yes, go to the turn point and then back. But uh, we don't know. Probably the ridges are very weak also today. Mario working the ridges slightly higher and to the left of our screen. Tilo and Sebastian Carva just uh, leaving that climb. The rest of the group coming in underneath, taking one turn. Tilo now leaving, 1,700 meters. Sebastian Carr a little higher, 1,850 meters. And over to the left, Mario now having to come west. Uh, he'll end up on the same ridge as this, uh, this group heading towards. Right. Yeah, that's the route. And uh, the problem is the um, next turn point, it's... Um, a little uh, out of the ridges, a little yeah. to the west. So they will have to leave the ridges, make the turn point, and don't then go back and to the ridge. Back. John Gatfield trying to stay with the pack, but a little low. Bottom of the screen, just under 1,500 meters. M Mark Tingi breathing a sigh of relief. He's finally got up to a, an altitude where he can probably relax for a moment or two. The group ahead, following the line of the ridge. Sebastian in front with Tilo on his right wing. Followed by Gentis in Alfa Romeo. Gentis from Lithuania. Rene still in there with uh, Giorgio Galetto in Yankee. Mario Kisling now joins that group. Not much in it, distance-wise, only about a kilometre. Didier and his Ventus 2 just next to Mario. And Sebastian Nagel in uh, Whiskey Mike, not too far back either, uh, running along with Bostian and Echo Juliet. If you'd like to join in the conversation, um, you can drop us a line on the live chat in YouTube. Just uh, if you're watching through the website, um, just click on the YouTube button bottom right, and then you can. Uh, uh, log in and uh, contribute. Any questions you have of a technical nature, um, Angle Casada will try and answer by text and any uh, gliding related questions we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to do that with the commentary team. 
Okay, so now we can see or guess that the actually the ridge is quite weak because they are flying very slow. We'll just try and give you one of the, the, the pilot symbols on the bottom left so you can see the energy that they're uh, uh, achieving or not. Yeah, so if you see the ground speed is like 150, they're probably flying 140 or something. It's a bit of a northerly component in the wind here, no, do you think? M m no, probably a very weak wind, but uh, um, f uh, because of the altitude, they mm. probably are flying um, indicated airspeed less than uh, what we see here. So I don't think there's strong wind, because if if there was strong wind, then the ridges will be working. Yeah. They are not taking really the ridge. So it will be very interesting how they get out to the turn point in the valley and then back. Hmm. Do you actually think the task is possible? Yes, I do. But uh, it will be slow. I don't think we will see um, 140 today. Okay. Average speed at the moment is uh, 95 to 97 kilometers yeah. an hour it will improve probably because the first turn point was very tricky they lost a lot of time on this uh, on the thermals around the, the first turn point um, now they will be using the ridge so i think it will be it will improve the speed but i don't think we will see something more than 120 probably okay just to recap the task today is a total of 286 kilometers with two legs coming south we're just uh, halfway down the second leg and they've got about 20-odd uh, kilometers to run. And from there, they're going to go north 117 kilometers, climbing up into the mountains. And then they've uh, got a couple of turn points to go around, and then the run home back to the airfield here and to Santiago. Just uh, looking at the fleet, it looks like Didier found something and has just done one turn. Echo Juliet in the same lift, but pushing on. Werner Arman just taking the energy and not going around the turn, but Didier is still working it. Meanwhile, the group ahead across the valley, heading towards the next ridge. Tilo now, eight kilometers to go. Well, um, um, in this uh, ridge they're arriving, there's usually um, a thermal on the left side, uh, I mean on the south side, but probably they are a little too low to catch that thermal because now they have it on the left. They should be at the top of the ridge to, to take it. Uh, we will see if they are able to take it um, at this altitude. And if they don't, we will uh, enjoy again a very low flight, um, going to the turn point and coming 200 meters below this or more probably. Yeah, leaving here, they got six kilometers yeah. out and then six no kilometers thermal. back. <laughs> Nobody's giving way, are they? Nobody's saying, come on, guys, let's get high, let's take it easy. Everybody's saying, well, if you want to keep up with me, you're going to have to play the low game. And believe me, the Chileans, they are not feeling local right now. <laughs> We're just really quite stunned that they're uh, pushing on like this. Um, you'd have thought somebody would have been patient and uh, worked their way up and then left at a higher level. But we, don't, we can't see the weather conditions. Um, hopefully we'll get a call from Alex. Uh, all we know is it, it's, it's blue, but we don't know the, uh, um, what the, the valley wind is doing here. But we can see from uh, here, from the information we got, the wind is lighter than normal. And it's lighter because there's a lot of cloud on the top of the mountains. There's thunderstorms on the Argentinian side. So we're not getting the usual convection that you would expect on this range of mountains. So it's not sucking the air in. And if it's not sucking the air in, we're not getting your valley breeze. So without the valley breeze blowing onto these hills, it's tough. It's hard. And they're finding it. They're gonna ha I think they're going to have a really hard struggle to get back up the altitude they need to come onto the Espanolas to go north. Yeah, I agree. Um, if you see, they're heading to this small mountain here. Um, they're probably um, looking for some thermal to get a little more height. Um, 
because they will be arriving very low for a usual Sunday Chilean flight, I mean. But as you see, every time uh, we, we receive European pilots here in Chile, they teach us how to fly the low routes in the valleys. Well, of course, Carlos, if you enjoy the flying where we fly, 3,000 feet or 1,000 meters above the ground is luxury. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, yeah. don't feel, they don't feel low, but they will feel low in a, in a moment or two, I think. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, the altitude of the bottom of this turn point is 600 meters, and they're arriving uh, around 1,400. So 800 meters uh, above the valley floor, and then they'll turn around and see a wall in front of them. So first round the turn point looks to be uh, René Vidal, and he's from from where Chile, I believe. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes he is from Chile. Yeah. Second looks like uh, Sebastian Kawa from Poland, and uh, in Alfa Romeo that's uh, Jinta Sub from Lithuania. Fourth looks like uh, Giorgio Galetto from Italy, and uh, very close together is Mario and uh, Tilo from Germany. Yeah, there's something really uh, uh, depressing about this because you're flying out into the valley to the turn point and everything looks good and you turn around and fly back and you go, oh no, and you see the ground going up faster than you can go. But what's interesting is they, they've just been flying through an area of lift. No idea where there's lift there. Wow. René coming back onto this uh, well, relatively small hill. Yeah, have you have you ever thermaled there? Have you ever been there, Carlos? Uh, no, believe me, I've never been here. Um, I don't remember the last time they put this turn point in a race. And uh, <laughs> again, it's very nice to be down here. Um, probably they will find some lift here in this small, very small mountain. Let's see. That goes Rene. Where is he from? <laughs> He's from Chile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but if the wind is south southwest, they've probably taken the turn and come back on the hill so they can drift with the wind now. They're going to lose a bit less by taking the. Th if it's not a great thermal, they'll lose less time by taking the thermal, drifting back with the wind onto the mountain, rather than trying to take it on the way into the turn. It's a gamble. It's a risk. But they're all doing the same thing. It's a race. And so far, nobody's tried to do anything different. Well, they are climbing. Yeah. That's good news. It's not the best of climbs, but uh, Sebastian, being patient, uh, climbing between one and two meters per second now. Just watching Rene's climb rate. Uh, it's around the one meter mark. Sebastian decided to take another one. Moved on turning right now. Yeah, you can imagine again the farm noise right now. I think they are they are watching a lot of lights in the farm and hearing a lot of noise coming from the farm. Yeah, just uh, for those of you who are not glider pilots, uh, we carry something called FLAM, which is a, a proximity warning device, um, sort of little radio transmitter that's uh, carried in each of the gliders that reports the current altitude, GPS position, and the predicted position. And uh, the receiving flam uses that to predict whether there's likely to be a collision. Uh, it just gives you a warning that somebody's, somebody's there. Uh, but with this many gliders, um, it'll be beeping almost continuously. Just uh, looking at the the altitudes, Fridian from uh, Switzerland in Four Sierra at 2,000 meters, but he's quite a long way back. Decided that he wants to stay high. Sebastian Carver now up to 1,600 meters, climbing at one and a half meters. Tilo? <laughs> yeah, just being asked by Brian, what's Tilo up to? He's uh, headed off low. Uh, we were three victor now. He's uh, at 1,300 meters. Well, Tilo, it's, it's not the first time he does uh, this kind of uh, flying because um, I, I saw him win a race. Uh, f coming from this area 
200 meters uh, below the rest of the pilots and uh, winning with uh, five minutes difference mm -hmm. uh, just uh, by uh, keeping the reach at low altitude. So I think he knows what he's doing. Well, he does. We're not yeah. quite so sure, yeah. though. There's <laughs> there seems to be another group here that have gone to the right-hand side. Uh, John Gatfield and Sebastian Kawa are on the right there. John must have had a bit more altitude and gone in through the turn and, and just bounced the group. Giorgio Galetto going left. This will be interesting. Bostian and uh, Ginta Zub from Lithuania. Rene not far behind. I was talking to Bostian earlier. The, the, the terrain down here is very similar um, to that in uh, the area behind his club in Lesse in uh, Slovenia. Same sort of altitude as well. And right, now they've hit the, the hill and turning left. Tilo a bit further ahead, but a lot lower. So, Carlos, would you be, be comfortable with, with uh, this, where Tilo is? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. He will face the ridge now to the right. Uh, the ridge um, to cross to the other side, uh, where the airfield is and where Blanco is, he, is, um, he will be crossing... I don't think he will, f uh, yes, uh, there, I don't think he will find my, uh, lift in the middle, just, I mean, if, he, if, if there's any, he will be able to keep the altitude, and uh, so he's, uh, he will be arriving to that area on the left, um, like one or two hundred meters above it, but then he will have to jump in the middle of the valley to take the riches on the east again, over this uh, airfield that's that uh, is there, but uh, I think in between he won't be able to find anything and probably with the um, uh, south wind, once he jump to the right or I mean to the east, he will be, uh, he will have a, a sink just after jumping to the east. So uh, a little, a little bit too low for me, but again they will get to the area where the they found this thermal coming to the turn point so if he's lucky um, and uh, high enough to make uh, to jump to this uh, thermal again uh, he make he can make a difference with the rest of the group yeah we uh, we've been talking about them being very low but actually they've been bouncing along nobody nobody's uh, panicked yet they're all uh, maintaining their speed they're, they're keeping the altitude but they're not dropping down to the bottom of the valley and heading off to an airfield yeah, but if you see they are flying uh, uh, 140, 180, um, probably now with a little um, wind coming from the south, so um, they are not really flying fast. They are they are worried about the altitude, mm. and uh, they are trying to keep the altitude because they know they need to get to Blanco. Actually, the race is less than half, I think. So they need to get all the way back to the club to continue to the north. So there's a risk of getting too low. You see, he will be able just to make it the pass. And now, uh, we he w I, I think he will be struggling to get up again. Fortunately, there is there are two airfields. Yeah, TLO now 1,200 meters. That's uh, starting to get a little bit squeaky. <laughs> um, the, the ridge on the right, so we've had a question, what sort of altitude is the ridge on the right and where you would sooner be? Um, we normally arrive here coming from the south when we come to the club on final glide. We arrive here at 1,700 or okay. 1,600. So look, TLO is heading now. If you see on the left, there's an airfield there. Okay, yeah, the, uh, the, the grey area that we can see, we'll just try and point it out with a pen. Uh, it's this one Yes, here. that one. There's an airfield there, and uh, can you see Well, there's no, no sink. There's no th sink? No, now it's he's sinking. Yeah, so... So we'll probably he's aiming to a cloud we cannot see. 
Yeah, we'll just have a look uh, a little further back, see where the others are. Chasing him down uh, with an altitude of 1,500 meters, certainly more Yeah, this is more like a Chilean flight. So we hope Tilo finds something out in the valley. And just behind Tilo, we've got three or four gliders. Now we've got um, Rene uh, from Chile, uh, Echo Juliet, uh, Spostian from uh, Slovenia, uh, Gintas from Lithuania, and in Whiskey Golf is Werner Arman from Austria, John Gatfield from Bailey's Farm International Gliding Club from the UK, and uh, in Yankee is Giorgio Galetto. Look, Tilo looks like Tilo found something All in the, the middle of the valley. There is the airfield. So he's got three meters, or is that his engine going? Yeah, he's definitely turning. He's found something. Maybe this is going to be a flatland. Is though. that skill or is that luck? I don't know, but whatever it is, good on Tilo. Uh, he, yeah. he doesn't care right now. He's just happy to be climbing. Yeah. yeah, the problem is he's showing it to the rest of the guys who are coming higher. Well, sometimes you share your good fortune with your friends is and just be happy you've got it. Yeah, just to explain, um, Tilo's glider does have a turbo in the back of it. A small sort of get you home lawnmower type engine. But, uh, we're not convinced he's using it. We're pretty sure he's actually found a, found a reasonable climb in the valley, which is good news. And that will put him back in the game. Yeah, three meters out in the valley. Yeah, I'm wondering why the guys haven't seen this, uh, haven't seen Tilo climbing in their farms. Uh. Uh, Sebastian looks like he's found a climb. Turned right, Rene turned left. Sebastian Carver now climbing between one and a half and two meters. Rene one meter, one and a half on the left hand side. I wonder if Georgia has seen Tilo. He's pushing on along that low ridge again now. Rene's climb now averaging one and a half to two meters. Everybody else piling in underneath. This is uh, a, a situation you don't really want with two thermals going in opposite directions very close together. Not much we can do about it. They'll just need to take care. Just hope they don't interlace. Once they see which which thermal is better, they'll all join into the same one. Yeah, we can see that happening now. So that that uh, area on the right is not as strong as the the thermal on the left. Yankee Oscar, John Gatfield didn't see it or didn't catch it and he's moved on. And uh, Giorgio Galetto off on the left hand side, he didn't catch it either. Mario plowing his own furrow off to the right This climb's starting to steady down now. Good couple of meters. Tilo still climbing over two meters in the valley. And uh, Carlos, it's now four o'clock. What do you think is going to happen? It's now peak time of the day. Is it going to con be stay reasonable or get better during the next hour or so? I think we won't see um, um, really uh, um, much improvement in the speed. It looks like the day will be weak. Um, actually, I've seen we have seen places where I've never been. So, yeah, I, I can bet uh, the Chilean pilots are wondering if they are locals or no, or not, because uh, I'm sure they are flying uh, like they've never uh, been flying before. So, the group, I think, it's making uh, the difference. I think they've found a good thermal now. Maybe if they're able to climb to um, over 2,000 meters again, could make a difference, but I'm not sure they will be able. I think we will see a uh, very low flight today, the whole task. We've seen Lucas so there, Sean. He's, uh, he it, it he's come high. back from nowhere. Yeah, he has. He's, he's now high. He's over 2,000 meters a little bit further back. We think we've got incoming from from Alex. Alex, can you hear uh, us and can you tell us what the wind yeah. is doing? Okay. Uh, north Blanco, that uh, is about 20 kilometers north of the south and 
one waypoint they just passed. And uh, we have a few cumulus clouds here at 2,300. Uh, we can see some clouds at it looks like we've all lost Alex, but uh, he was at the Blanco and uh, had clouds to 3,200 meters, we think. So that's good news, that there's uh, some indication of lift around. Uh, looks like Rene's just left this climb and pushing on. He must have seen the, the cloud. John Gatfield off in the distance. Uh, not very high, John. Um, Yankee Oscar just trying to look for his altitude, yeah, 1,356 meters, um, crossing that valley. Hopefully he'll get something on the other side. That's in the area of Blanco. Yeah, this is Blanco, the, bl the white uh, mountain you see on the right. That's why we call it Blanco. Yeah. And uh, the good thing is uh, there is an airfield. There are two airfields down there. So uh, if you don't find anything at Blanco, you um, finish landed in the what we call the Blanco airfield. Mm. Looks like Rennie has got a reasonable climb. Uh, Sebastian, Sebastian at Krummel, Krummel, he's been playing a cagey game. He's been sitting at the back, holding his height, watching what's happening. And in that thermal, we saw him come in at the top. And I think that he's probably saving his energy, his adrenaline, taking his time, not making a mistake. He's learnt in this contest, you need to be at the front at the end, not at the beginning or at the first Good turning point. point. Yep. And he's still in the game, which is the main thing. 1,800 meters now for Krummel. Flying with Mario. Mario just uh, no, cutting Mario right in this. some uh, decent lift. This is Blanco. They're coming from here. The rest of the group heading towards Blanco. John Gatfield's a little further ahead, pushing on to the next ridge. Tilo out in the valley. Didier now, 1,800 metres, leading this pack. Bostian not far away, slightly higher on the right. Rene following down the line of the ridge. Everybody else following in behind. Um, Rene get a good pull up then. And Thomas Gosner in Golf Tango, he seems to got a big uh, spurt on a big lease of life in there since yesterday he was so happy to come third yesterday to be on the podium and i think he's now thinking well if i can do it yesterday let's have another go today we well thomas is almost local because he has, he has been flying with us i think f every qualifying we have had and uh, he was here at uh, 2009 2010 and then all the qualifiers we have mm -hmm. done so he knows very well these mountains. Just uh, looking at the altitudes, and Lucas is up at 3,140, 50 meters now. I'm just uh, going to uh, zoom back out and um, have a look to see where he is and bring you that picture. And there he is. He's uh, quite a long way east. He's um, almost at the top of the, the first level. There's sort of two levels of mountains here, and uh, the top level uh, is up to around the 3,000 meter mark. But um, there he is. He seems to be seems to be fine. It, uh, we're just checking whether he's on this leg or not. And uh, shake of the head, it looks like he's still got to come south. So whilst he's got himself high, unfortunately. Um, He's still got a long way to go. He's got another 30k to fly south and then 30k to fly back. Meanwhile, back at the, the leading group, um, we've got uh, Tilo in three Victor, who's now got himself onto the ridge, with John Gatfield underneath. Reasonable energy along this, this line here. John Gatfield down at uh, 1,380 metres. 